Welcome back, attractive and well-educated watchers, to a brand new series on our channel for Science Saturday. This time around, we're jumping into Universe Sandbox, because what's more science-y than Universe Sandbox? We can't figure out how to make it full screen yet, but uh, we're working on it. Okay, welcome to our solar system, where we're going to be doing the whole introduction and everything here. So, you know, sit back, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and, uh, you know, comment in the comment section down below, share anywhere that you can think to. Biggest thanks, as always, to all of our wonderful patrons over on Patreon, without which we would have never started any of this awesome YouTubing goodness in the first place, and, of course... Consider going on down to the description, checking out all the links to support us, and uh, pledging even just a dollar a month, because every buck, every buck helps. So, uh, yeah, this is the first time we've ever opened up Universe Sandbox. We're doing it for you guys, so let's move forward. Welcome to our solar system. Oh, here it is. Bam! Look at that. Oh, there, there we are. This is the Earth. It is home to everyone you are. No, oh, sorry, everyone you know. Sorry, we were about to say everyone you've ever known. It, which is also true. Earth Earth is the home to every human that has ever lived. Period. Anyone you've ever known is here. Locked in the gravitational field of this ball of dirt and water. Whoa, that's very bright. Let's zoom out a little bit. The sun, the most important source of fuel for life on Earth. What if we got rid of it? Click tools. Oh, we see what's going down here. Select. Delete. Without the sun, our entire solar system falls apart. Every Without the gravity to hold them there, everything just flings off into the distance. And Earth... Gets a little chilly. We actually did an article on this at one point about exactly how chilly Earth does get. Rotate the camera. Click and drag. Oh. As you'll see, on the far side... Or maybe it's just... Very quickly... How is night and day a thing? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, whatever. Zoom in and out with the wheel... Earth is very cold now. Maybe we can fix it by adding another source of gravity and heat. Pause the simulation. Boop. New star to the simulation. Add an object. Click add. Alright. Click stars. It's the super giant Rigel. Right here, that looks good. 23 times more massive than our sun. The gravitational force should be enough to bring the bring back the planets. We'll just... Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, it's too much. It's too much. They're just crashing into it. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Oh, Jupiter's going in, man. Oh, Jupiter just slams straight in. It doesn't look right. Maybe we made some mistakes and ruined our solar system. That's okay. There's always something to learn from an experiment. Even one that ends in disaster. Oh, whoops, one more. Oh, that's where our Jupiter hit, you can tell. Yeah. Alright, well, continue on to the next part of the introduction and learn about creating life-sustaining worlds. Or, if you want to skip the introduction and start experimenting on your own, uh, let's just continue, you know? Let's, let's figure it out. Rigel was too big for our solar system. The planets didn't even have enough velocity to orbit such a massive star. Turns out, the sun is a good match for us. But what if Earth were closer to the sun? Here is an Earth that is orbiting much closer to the Sun than it should be. To see Earth's temperatures, look at its property, just click on it. Boop. Oh, it's very warm there. It's exceedingly warm. Full, uh, click the panel. Boom. Done. 
you can change a property, click its text box. Uh, you can also use multipliers, okay. Next. Temperatures are rising fast, set it to a more comfortable 20C. Bam. It just goes right up. Made it cooler for a bit, but temperatures are still rising because it's so close to the sun. Speed up time, wait. Okay. Now select the Earth. The Earth is now 246C. Focus the camera, click it again. Zoom in! Whoa! After a couple of years of orbiting closely to the sun, temperatures get so high, oceans boil away. Without water, Earth can support no life. Fortunately, in reality, Earth is already in the perfect position. Yeah, the second Earth is orbiting at its actual distance from the sun, it is in what is known as the sun's habitable zone. Uh, see a star's habitable zone? Turn on the habitable zone look. View. Habitable. Bam! We are on the inner end of the habitable zone. We could actually afford to be out a little further. Green area represents the sun's habitable zone, also known as the Goldilocks zone. This zone shows where temperature is just right for liquid water on a rocky planet like Earth. In the red zone, temperatures are too high, and in the blue zone, temperatures are too cold. Look at this. Earth's temperature. It's perfect. 13.5. Excellent. Our planet may be the right place to allow life to thrive, but small changes can still have a massive impact on our climate. We've learned this using the scientific method, a process that involves careful observation and analysis rather than belief. This is the same method that has allowed for technological advances we now take for granted, like smartphones, the internet, and modern medicine. And it's one, that's one of the reasons that you shouldn't take it for granted so much. Because a lot of these science deniers out there, like our president, use a smartphone all the time and are denying science with science. <laughs> and it has allowed us to explore the depths of space. Continue to the last part of the introduction to explore simulations of astronomical missions and discoveries, or if you want to, okay, no, well, let's continue. Using what we learn from science, we're able to accomplish the seemingly impossible. You, oh. Voyager spacecraft. In 1977, we launched the Voyager spacecraft to explore the gas giant Jupiter. Voyager continues its mission today as it journeys into interstellar space carrying a golden record of the sounds of Earth. We love that record, by the way. It's great. We've discovered potentially habitable planets farther away than we can imagine. Here, in the TRAPPIST-1 system more than 40 light years away, we've observed five planets that are similar in size to Earth. The Trappist system is really cool. You could actually, if you were sitting on one of these, like on Trappist, Trappist 1E, you would be able to see Trappist 1D going by when it went by. You'd actually be able to see the individual planets going by because they're so close. Similar planets in size to Earth. Bam. This one, this is one of the three that orbit the Red Dwarf's habitable zone. Trappist 1E. And right now, somewhere on this small planet, a small team, our planet, a small team is building a universe simulator that makes it easy to launch a moon at the Earth. Oh boy. Moon drop time. Aim and fire. What if questions you couldn't... We did an article about this one actually a while back. It was nice. Bam! What if moon drop? Well, why don't we watch? Like, what if the sun disappeared? Or what if the earth was too hot? Or what if the moon came hurtling toward us? This is what that's about. Oof. We would all die. Or even, 
What if the Milky Way collided with the Andromeda Galaxy, which will eventually happen? In Universe Sandbox, you create, destroy, and explore on a scale you've never before imagined. And honestly, let's be real, it's difficult to imagine. One last thing with these, while these galaxies collide. Click home. Oh, home is the starting point for everything. Click guides. If you ever want to learn more about using Universe Sandbox, just uh, select a topic here. Click the back arrow. Click open. Here you'll find simulations like the one we just saw. Oh, look at how beautiful that is. Plus many more. We hope you enjoy exploring and experimenting in Universe Sandbox. Beautiful. This is how it would look. We, uh, Funny enough, actually, we know that the Andromeda and Milky Way galaxy are going to collide in a few billion years or what have you. And, um... When they do that, this is what it will look like. We, we've already... This is one of the most well-constructed and well-reproduced cosmological experiments around is what will it look like. And all of this is math. Uh, so we can... We know how it's going to happen because of this. And so gradually, over the course of many, many eons, these two uh, galaxies will... You know, the supermassive black holes at the center will be will be locked in a kind of war. Oh, that's so cool. There it is. That's a black hole right there. But we can't see it. Because it's surrounded by gas. Which, interestingly enough, is pretty much ex Sagittarius A+. Plus. That's our... That's our bo big boy. Yeah, that's that's our Milky Way galaxy big boy. Sagittarius A+. Plus. Now, Sagittari er, er, Sagittarius is probably going to be... Be consumed by Andromeda's big chonky boy because it's like 25% bigger although there's a very real chance that uh, Sagittarius might consume a lot more matter than Andromeda's supermassive black hole when it happens and when that happens uh, there's a chance that it might become more massive and instead consume Andromeda's black hole just a cool little you know we don't know how that one's gonna roll that the only time will tell uh, let's, uh, open up our solar system. Boom. Oh, yeah. Solar system is home to eight planets, four terrestrial inner planets, four gigantic outer planets, the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, and the trans-Neptunian objects beyond Neptune, like Pluto. Notable dwarf planets and other belts, uh, large objects include Ceres in the asteroid belt, Pluto beyond the order of Neptune, and Sedna on a distant and eccentric orbit. That's one of our favorite Kuiper Belt objects, Sedna. So, we're gonna zoom into Earth here. Our little, our little pale blue dot. Uh, we can, we can slow the hell down. All right, we're just gonna gradually ramp our uh, time scale back a little. Bam! There we go. Now we can see our delightful pale blue dot. Isn't that wonderful? Jeez. It's just really pretty. Every animal you've ever known. Every picture, every cat video, every king and peasant, every war and love. All that stuff. All the Carl Sagan line. Everything and everyone you have ever known. And everyone and everything they have ever known has been on this pale blue dot. Even our messages from other worlds and those who exist 
over it in the space station are still locked on this world. Maybe someday we will find a way to explore other planets and put boots on the ground on places like Mars and even Proxima Centauri's bone planets. But right now, this is our home and we need to take care of it. And perhaps to, to, um, oh, what's the word we're looking for? Emphasize the uh, importance of this world and how, you know, chance it is, the chance contingency of life. We are going to throw a teapot at the speed of light through the planet to help everybody appreciate exactly, uh, you know, what we're living on. Oh, well, we just threw a teapot. One moment. Oh, launch, right. Yeah, we just threw a teapot into orbit. One moment. <clears throat> Sorry, our bad guys. We are going to throw a teapot at the speed of light at this planet. We'll throw it. Oh, let's wait for America to come around again. You know, just a. Just to be sure and fair, you know, we're an American. We're allowed to throw, uh, things in America. Yup. That's our story and we're sticking to it. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Chucking teapots at Earth. Oh, are they not going fast enough? They wouldn't be going fast enough, right? How do we... How do we launch faster? We can slow down even more while we figure out... Auto launch... Flow. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Alright, alright, alright. So... Light speed. Bam. Here we go. Launch at one lights. We are going to launch this bad boy at exactly one C into America. Does it not work? You know what? You really annoying. Don't need to be here. Uh, so we're just gonna tools delete. Bam. Okay. Back to throwing teapots at the speed of light. Boom. Oh. Okay. Honestly, we, we think that our teapots just aren't launching right. Hmm. No change. Well, uh... Light speed. Light speed. One light. Try this. Uno mas. Where's America? Launch at light speed. It does launch them at light speed. It just launches them at light speed through the planet. That's dumb. Okay, now we gotta come back to Earth. 
Okay, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. We can do this together. Is there a reason that things don't interact and aren't interacting? Is there a reason that we're not allowed to touch the earth with any force whatsoever? We're just, we're actually really irritated at it. Okay, so why does it, why does it work if we launch a moon at the earth but not a teapot? All right, restart, restart the simulation. Yes, here, everybody, you get to watch us flounder on this thing and act like we know what we're doing or something should happen when, let's be real, we don't know what we're doing. Boop. Launch. At. You know what? Launch. At one light speed. Boom. work a golf ball perhaps yeah we think it just goes through it every time maybe maybe we got this oops oh we don't want e that's a bad number uh maybe point nine light oh also we need to chill the heck out nope still just being stupid also we don't know what anybody else thinks but that grid's really obnoxious bowling ball just Okay. Apparently, it's impossible. We're not, we're just not allowed to do this. This is really obnoxious. So we can, we can chuck planets at our planet, but we can't chuck a freaking pool ball. A four-sided dice. The death of planets. We can't throw a four-sided dice at Japan. No, no, they, they literally just soar through. That's infuriating. What the heck is the point of this game if we can't th throw things at the speed of light at our planet? Greatly disappointed. A watermelon? The Great Pyramid of Giza. Nothing is large enough to interact with the planet. Random asteroid? No, nothing. Still nothing. Okay, okay, so do we have to zoom out? What the heck is the problem here? This is infuriating. What, what is the damage? We want an answer. Leave in the comments why the heck we cannot throw a fucking teapot at Earth. We get one. We get one, that's it, okay? We're just, we're just tired of not being able to destroy our planet to emphasize the chance nature of our existence and how important it is to preserve our world, goddammit. <laughs> okay, okay. So if we zoom out far enough, is shooting a teapot at our planet gonna work? No. Would anybody like to tell us uh, what the threshold is? Because we're tired of chucking marbles into space. We want to chuck marbles at our planet. Uh <sighs> That is the opposite of what we wanted. That was horrible. A 
great disappointment, honestly. Like, super big disappointment. Yeah. We're actually really displeased at that. Uh, well, you know what we're gonna do instead? We're so angry about that, we're going to reduce the size of the sun until it becomes a black hole. Maybe that's a bit too far. Uh, radius of the sun. It'll get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Keep getting smaller. Yep. Notice the density keeps going up. It should be maintaining the same mass, actually. Boop. Sorry. Let's try that again. As it maintains the same mass, but continues to get more and more dense, it enters an area, or gets closer and closer to an area that we call the Schwarzschild radius, which is where objects become so dense, uh, and, and, and close together, and, uh, essentially that it, it becomes a black hole. Light cannot escape anymore, and then we get a black hole. So the Schwarzschild radius is how small you have to be at the same density as you are presently to, uh, you know, keep, to become a black hole. And so, checking this one out. We just keep it up until it gets less, less. Hell, we can even zoom in. And as our sun continues to shrink, because we can do that, Notice that the surface gravity gets considerably higher because it's getting more dense. Uh, clearly, it's not showing the um, proper density here, but that's just because it's super dense. We, we are attaining densities that are just quite difficult to contemplate even for our advanced human monkey brains. Now, gradually, we're getting to the sun being less than 10,000 kilometers in radius. Uh, and so once we get there, we're starting to hit some very serious density. The surface gravity, which you can see down here, keeps going up, even though the mass remains, because of the density factor. It will take more and more just to get off of this sun, if it were a planet, this planet. Gradually, density becomes extremely silly. Push it, and we push it. And eventually, at some point, the sun becomes... Well, it hits its Schwarzschild radius. Yeah, almost there. And then, once it hits its Schwarzschild radius, it becomes a black hole. We need to zoom in further, because it's so small. We're, uh, as we recall, the Schwarzschild radius for the sun is like a couple of miles or something, a few kilometers. We're surprised it hasn't, uh, hasn't Schwarzschilded out already. If it doesn't work, we're gonna also be pretty sore because we've actually seen somebody do this in this game. So, uh, yeah. Is it not gonna work? We're sorry to say, guys, that we're actually extremely disappointed with this game. Oh, no, no, we finally hit it. We, we, we hit it. We, we hit 1.5 kilometers. The sun has officially become a black hole. However, everything remains the same. Because, after all, the same amount of mass is in play as was before. We, that might not be entirely true, for the record. We might have seriously screwed things up with our fiddling with the sun's, uh, stuff. 
Oh. Well, now it's just acting like the sun isn't there at all. So we think that we accidentally fiddled with some stuff, but that's not actually how that should work. Yeah, well. The sun. You know what? What's this thing? <laughs> what is this thing? <laughs> we don't know. It's a rock. Why would we care about a rock? All right, you know what? Let's put a real black hole in here. Just, uh... Oh, that's super obnoxious. Okay. The sun. The... Uh... Let's just do a hundred solar masses. And that, watch how it turns everything to havoc. The sun is now definitely locked in that. Everything is being very definitively screwed up by this black hole. Let's watch how... Even Earth isn't going to be able to get out of this one unscathed. At some point... Oh, what's this? Venus just is gonna... Venus is stuck. Venus might have to take the big plunge here. Can Earth get away? Earth is probably gonna get away. Jupiter, what are you up to today? Jupiter is probably going to get... Is not gonna get away, actually. Now we can take a look at this from a whole new perspective. Venus is, uh... In a new place. Very hot, but that's not surprising. Jupiter is very cold. It looks like most of the planets got away. Most of them were like, nope, I'm out. The sun, stuck. Tugged along forever by a horrifying black hole a hundred times its mass. Uh, you know, this game is really pretty, but uh, it occurs to us that we don't know how to do much with it, and we need to learn more about how to uh, launch teapots at the Dern planet. Because that's, that's, what, that's what makes us the most angry. That's what makes us the most angry. Because we can't throw teapots at the planet. Or Venus, for that matter. One moment, here, we'll, we'll show you. We can we throw a teapot at Venus? No. No, it just goes straight through it. Stupid. Urgh. Okay, well, as much as uh, we would like to be angry and throw bananas at planets, um, we can't do that. And we need to do more research on this game and find out how to throw bananas at planets. Or watermelons, or sledgehammers, or golf balls, or marbles, or teapots. So, uh, if you're excited for us to return and actually do something somewhat worthwhile instead of just stare at the freaking cosmos all day and be angry at stuff, uh, please remember to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and, uh, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Maybe about the chance nature of, uh, everything. If not, uh, that's cool too. Also, biggest thanks as always go to all of our wonderful and lovely patrons over on Patreon for their support, without which we would have never managed to do any of this awesome stuff in the first place. So, please consider pledging to our Patreon. Go find it by links in the description. Thanks a bunch. Stay safe. Stay inside. Save lives. And remember that black lives matter. Bye-bye.